Möglichkeiten zu integrieren, zu anderen Companies, die es waren das Founders of Omnisway Company, ehemalige IPV hier als Staff von Norway Germany. And um, yeah, I think you're presenting something like your baby or <laughs> before that. Um, so he's talking about past, present and future of Lab Proxy and I'm sure there will be a future for this. <laughs> Thank you, Till. And uh, hi, I'm uh, Oliver Conover. I'm the core developer of MapProxy. And as Till said, I'm uh, one of the co-founders of Omniscale, so a small company in uh, the northwest of Germany. And uh, we do a lot of open source and open street map stuff. And yeah, today, I want to talk about the past, the present, and the future of MapProxy. And uh, the past, um, well, how we started with MapProxy. Um, it was uh, at the end of 2008, and we had the idea uh, for ma when we had the idea uh, for map proxy, and we knew that tile caching is past and that it will be the future. Uh, but we also knew that um, the government requires WMS services, and our idea was we just uh, combine a tile cache with a full WMS and um, make a product out of it. And this is how the first version of a map proxy looked like as a, as a schema. Um, we have on one side, we have clients that communicate with map proxy and map proxy itself communicates with, uh, uh, with other WMS servers or tile servers. And the first features of uh, map proxy, of course, uh, was that it uh, supported tile uh, requests. So clients make requests to map proxy and MapProxy deliver delivers tiles. And we s when these tiles are missing, MapProxy would request the source service and, uh, to fill the cache. We also supported WMS from the first version on, um, cascaded requests. Uh, so uh, MapProxy just forwarded the request for the same exact bounding box and with an A and projection to the source. And uh, MapProxy would return that, uh, that image. But we also supported um, um, responding to a WMS request for, from uh, cached data. And this is uh, quite unique for a map proxy. And it does it by, um, maybe you can see it here, it's uh, just uh, a map with, uh, um, they should be tiles. And when a request comes in, map proxy just uh, combines multiple tiles that are uh, all um, uh, affected by that request. Um, it will, uh, will create one image, merge the tiles together, um, scale them to the exact resolution that was requested by the user, and uh, it even uh, supports reprojection. So when your cache is in one projection but the user requests another uh, projection, it does it, um, yeah, it does the reprojection. And it does it outbound, um, inbound, and on the fly. So um, when you have a cache in one projection, it can reproject outbound data, but it also can uh, reproject on the inbound um, when you want to build up a cache in one projection, but your source doesn't support it, you can reproject it then, and uh, on the fly for cascaded requests. And we used uh, MapProxy in production since uh, 2009, but it was only used by us. And uh, software only gets better when you have uh, more users, when you get more feedback, and when, um, yeah, when, when uh, people with other use cases come to you and say, it would be great if MapProxy could do that. And so we open sourced MapProxy, and um, all the features are listed. We're in our first open source release. Um, we started with version 0 0.8, and it was in uh, May 2010. And from then on to, to, to the present, we had now six major releases in the last three and a half, uh, three and a half years. And we added lots of features, uh, most of the time to make things easier and uh, also to solve uh, completely new use cases. And um, now I want to highlight uh, some of the uh, features that we added in the last three and a half years. Uh, one feature was um, with the uh, 0.8.3 release uh, that we now supported um, basically any tile source. You can just 
create your own, uh, write down your own URL template, and you can access any X, X Y, Z um, uh, tile source or a WMSC that requires a fixed uh, parameter uh, order. We also improved the seeding tool. Um, seeding is a process of um, uh, pre-generating the tiles so that your cache is not empty at the beginning. And um, since then, uh, the seeding tool supports parallel seeding. So uh, MapProxy makes multiple requests to the same source. And we also support um, a feature that we call coverages. Um, and with that, you only see the required areas instead of the complete bounding box. And you can see it in uh, this image. If you want to see uh, the UK and you just would use a bounding box, you see that you're seeding a lot of uh, water areas in neighboring countries. And with MapProxy, you can just uh, load up a, a polygon file, a uh, polygon, and just seed within that polygon. And this makes seeding a lot, uh, a lot faster, and you're saving a lot of uh, disk space. And you can load the polygons from, uh, from GeoJSON files, shapefiles, even databases like PostGIS and Oracle, all thanks to the OGR library. Uh, with uh, 0 0.9, we added a multi-map proxy, which is a, um, uh, a tool to um, have multiple map proxy configurations run all in the same instance of map proxy. So if you have uh, want to run different WMS services, uh, you don't have to start up mul multiple uh, map proxies. Since then, we support coverages also for sources, and uh, I will show that later. And we also added a demo service. So you s since then, you, you have the uh, ability to, to easily check uh, all your layers that you've configured with a simple open layers uh, client. With a 1.0 release, we added uh, the security API, uh, where you can uh, write your own uh, functions to define what's, uh, what a user is allowed to do. And uh, I will also show you, uh, uh, go into detail that in a minute. And MapProxy supports double, uh, WMS feature info, and uh, you can optionally uh, add XSL um, uh, scripts to transform the feature information. So if you have two different uh, WMS servers and the format is different of the feature info, you can write your own scripts to, to unify uh, that format. Then we added WMTS support and uh, map proxy utils, which is uh, a tool that combines multiple subcommands. And one subcommand is the uh, serve develop. And with that command, you can easily uh, start a testing server for MapProxy. It will check if your MapProxy configuration if your MapProxy configuration changes, and will then just reload it. And you don't have to deal with uh, an a deployment in Apache, etc. And we also support um, since then MapNIC and Map Server directly, so you um, don't have to set up a, a Map Server inside Apache, for example. With the next releases, uh, we added a few uh, um, new cache backends. Before that, MapProxy always stored the tiles on the file system uh, as simple files. And yeah, we added MB tiles and CacheDB backends. We added more utils, for example, the scales tool that allows you to convert between uh, scales and resolutions, which is uh, quite handy when you deal with uh, MapProxy configurations. With 1.4, one of the uh, larger features was uh, the clipping of requests in the security API. Um, and yeah, I will show you that also in a minute. Uh, with 1.5, we supported reprojection of tiles on the fly. So if you have tiles in one projection, MapProxy uh, can transform them into another uh, projection. Uh, we support uh, a mixed image mode. Um, which is uh, useful for aerial images, which you want to store in uh, as JPEG, but at the boundaries where the aerial images are, trans where you don't have aerial images, where you want to have transparency, uh, MapProxy will store these uh, tiles as PNG. 
and even more map proxy utils uh, like the grid tool, which shows you how many tiles are there uh, in, in, in your grid uh, for, for each zoom level in your grid definition, and even how many tiles are within uh, a coverage as you defined. 1.6, we released that uh, last week, I think. Um, we added more cacheback ends and uh, also the uh, Decorate Image API, which allows you to write your own code that um, uh, could can manipulate the uh, the images to go to goes to the client. So you could add watermarks or something like that. So now we are at the uh, present, and yeah, lots of features. We uh, now had uh, nearly 2,000 commits. Um, the change log lists uh, 260 bullet points. I just highlighted the most important, and uh, so you might ask, uh, this must be a lot of code, but MapProxy itself was written in Python, and Python is a very uh, powerful programming language. And so the code base is relatively small. It's just a bit over 30,000 lines of code. And on top of that, we have nearly the same amount of code uh, for tests, um, which I think is uh, really great for a software like that. Uh, we have a lot of low-level tests, and which uh, um, we also have a lot of high-level tests, system tests, that take a complete map proxy configuration, um, start up a map proxy, make requests to it, check if the response uh, is uh, a valid XML document, if, yeah, if, if everything is, is, is valid, and it also checks uh, the request map proxy makes to source request. And um, we have a uh, Jenkins instance, um, which runs all tests of each commit. Uh, it's also integrated into our GitHub repository, so we get a warning when someone uh, makes a pull request uh, um, that uh, breaks the build. And um, you see the small red uh, mar uh, green marker and everything is fine. Uh, help, the documentation now is uh, 120 pages uh, when you get that as a PDF. We have a mailing list, uh, you can get support there are uh, now uh, a lot of uh, local open source companies that uh, that use MapProxy that have knowledge in MapProxy, and of course uh, we do support um, uh, for that. So the interesting part is what can you do with it? And now I have some some use cases um, of MapProxy. Well, of course it is a tile cache, so you can use it for simple tile caching. And it's used in the German broadband atlas for uh, one example. Um, and yeah, the nice thing about uh, the tile cache um, uh, of map proxy is, uh, uh, of course, uh, the seeding tool. Um, yeah. You can accelerate existing WMS services. Um, this is uh, 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 used a lot in Germany, where we have a lot of um, uh, old and rusty and slow WMS servers. And uh, yeah they want you to, to accelerate them. Uh, as I said, you can transform tiles, and this is used by a few OpenStreetMap contributors, and um, they have access to, to open data tiles from, from a, a local tile server, but um, these tiles are not in the Web Mercator projection, and they use uh, map proxy to get the data into uh, a JOSM, an OpenStreetMap editor, so that they can digitize uh, uh, roads and buildings. Another example is um, you, um, you have your own WMS server, but unfortunately that WMS doesn't support the Web Mercator projection, and but you want to overlay uh, this, uh, y your WMS server with OpenStreetMap tiles or Google Maps, etc. You can use map proxy to reproject the data. Um, now the security API, map proxy can restrict access to uh, to your source uh, services, and um, it does this um, um, yeah with a, with a security API. So you can write your own code to um, that connects to your own user database, for example. And um, you, your code can decide what the user is allowed to do. And you can limit services like WMS or tile request, uh, the request type like feature info, and um, the layers 
but also the areas. And uh, for example, you can say user A uh, is allowed to see a, a layer X, but only within the boundaries of Germany, for example, and everything else is, is, is clipped. And in this case, it's uh, made transparent so that you can see the layer below. And this is quite powerful. Uh, uh, satellite provider uses this um, yeah, to restrict the access uh, to, to paid customers. And uh, it also works with tiled request, this one. And uh, last but not least, uh, one larger use case. Um, this is from an actual um, national network operator in Germany. And they, um, they, their, cu their, um, their customers, uh, th they have a network on the last mile to the customers. And that, res uh, that requires them to have access to official cadastral maps. And in case of Germany, that means, um, yeah, Germany, we have 16 federated states. And so we also have 16 cadastral WMS services. So WMS, it's a standard, so it's quite easy to use it. Um, that would you, that's what uh, you would think. But um, when you look in detail to all these uh, WMS services, you will see that um, the cadastral services are mostly not free. So you have to um, uh, have some, some user credentials. And um, they all use different authorization methods. Some of the WMS implementations are just broken. They don't return any ETSG codes. They uh, return invalid uh, bounding boxes. Um, they don't behave like the uh, OGC standard uh, uh, says. And um, yeah, there's not a single projection that's handled by all, uh, et cetera. So when you want to make these WMS services available to uh, hundreds of in-house users, then yeah, good luck. Um, but you can use Map Proxy for that to unify all services. You can uh, have a single URL for all cadastral uh, maps. And you can use the coverage feature for uh, all your sources. So you can say that, um, uh, that this, serv uh, this, this source is only uh, uh, delivers data in this region. And when a request comes in for this region, Map Proxy will only make a request to that server and not to the other one. The authorization is hidden from the user. Um, the capabilities are valid. Um, all sources are transformed to, the, to, to a single projection. And we can even make um, uh, th the background transparent for uh, services that uh, uh, do not support that. So make one WMS available to hundreds of in-house users, that's easy. OK, that's um, with, the, uh, um, with the present and the use cases. Um, I now uh, want to give you a quick look into the future. Um, now 1.6 is out, so uh, we're now working on 1.7. We will just do, um, w we don't have any uh, larger features planned because we already um, are making uh, plans for uh, the 2.0 release. And um, we will make some backwards incompatible changes, um, use it to, to uh, refactor uh, some parts. We will also support Python 3. And um, we will uh, add a new background service. And um, yeah, we will support Python 3. Uh, we will skip uh, uh, um, uh, the 2.5. Uh, yeah. And um, OK, new background service. Uh, this is the last point uh, I want to make. Um, first, I have to explain the process model of Map Proxy. Map Proxy is request based. A request comes in, one process or thread deals uh, uh, with the process, and the response goes out. But as soon as the response is out, you can't do anything uh, uh, anymore because the next request comes in. And this is uh, given by the Web Service Gateway, gateway interface that Map Proxy implements. And it's similar to how CGI and uh, mod, uh, Apache modules and Java tablets work. So limitations are that you don't have any long-running processes. As soon as the request ends, uh, your process stops. And uh, you can't really communicate between requests. There are workarounds. Uh, MapProxy uses, for example, an external tool uh, to have a long-running process to see tiles. 
And MapProxy also uses file logs for some synchronizations um, so that uh, not two processes make the same request to the source. Uh, but it's all um, limited. If we had a long-running background service, uh, we could implement all these features. We could add something like a priority queue so that um, uh, we could limit the load to, to, um, to the sources that we now, uh, um, because one process would now, okay, we, we have two running uh, uh, queries to, to this source. We, we are not making any more. We're just queuing that. Uh, we could add seeding without, um, without having cron uh, task, etc. We could rate limit requests and um, implement adaptive pre-seeding, etc. So a lot of features that, that would be possible with that. And uh, we have a map proxy render daemon that's available at GitHub. It's, um, it works with 1.6. We already use it for two projects. Uh, it's not officially announced. And um, w we will, um, with map proxy 2.0, we will add a map proxy daemon. Um, it will be an optional feature, and um, it will not contain, uh, it will not include all these, these features, but it will be the framework to implement all these features in the, f in the future. And yeah, summary, map proxy is more than just uh, a tile cache. There's a steady growth of, uh, of features that uh, we hope that we test them all well with all the test suits. And yeah, there's more to come in the next uh, releases in the next uh, years. And um, yeah, that's it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah, always great to see the developers here and the code that's so enthusiastic about their platform. Any questions?